we should avoid the condescending attitude towards computer users which says that what goes on inside the software is a mystery that is beyond them. Most people don't become expert auto mechanics, but lots of people learn a certain amount about how to maintain their cars. And you can learn as much as you want to learn. So if someone started to say that there's no reason why you should be allowed to get at the engine of your car because you're not a mechanic and to ordinary people they sh just shouldn't worry their little heads about what goes on inside the engine you would recognize that this is a nasty insulting attitude it's nasty and insulting even though there is some truth in that claim because it's only partly true it's true that most people don't learn everything about maintaining their cars. In fact, we don't even learn most of it, but we learn as much as we want to learn. We're free to learn it. And this is very important because, in fact, if you look at society, it's a, t it's a small fraction, maybe it's a few percent of people who learn enough to actually start changing their cars. But that few percent is a lot of people. And if you start forbidding people to do this, you're going to make a lot of people very angry. Well, it's easier to learn what's going on in a program than it is to learn what's going on in a car. You don't need any special tools. If you've got a computer, you've got all the tools you need. You don't, all you need is to load in the other programs that are useful for helping you figure out what's going on. Lots of people can learn this. In fact, there are about a million people contributing to free software now. It's a fairly substantial number of people. And we can expect this knowledge to continue diffusing. I wouldn't be surprised if 10 years from now, if, if uh, powerful enemies like Microsoft don't wipe out free software, I wouldn't be surprised if there are 10 million people participating in developing free software. And, and it's true, most people won't learn enough to become to become skilled enough that they can write large pieces of software. But a lot of people can learn enough to make occasional changes. We shouldn't be condescending towards people. But even the people who choose not to learn anything about what goes on inside software will benefit from the fact that free software is developed in a democratic system. The users have control. You see, when a program is proprietary, it keeps the users divided and helpless because first of all they're forbidden to share with each other and second they can't find out what's going on inside the program let alone change anything only the developers have the source code so only the developers can feasibly make changes and this means the developers have control over what that program does they have the control over what your computer does when you are using that program and they take advantage of this control. Not all, but many developers of proprietary software take advantage of this control to make the program do things that are designed to be good for them, not good for you. Now, when the program is proprietary, it's very hard to do anything about that. A lot of proprietary programs spy on you. For instance, many of the programs people use to access information on the Internet report what you are looking at. Windows Media Player does this. Real Player does this. The TiVo does this. They all contain non-free software. They go beyond mere surveillance, though. For instance, there are many non-free programs that reconfigure your computer. For instance, they make it start displaying ads. There are non-free programs that have the functionality of refusing to function. This is called DRM, Digital Restrictions Management, where the program says, I don't feel like opening this file. I won't let you. The program, on behalf of its developer, tells you what to do. This is possible because the developers of a non-free program have control. 
with free software, the users have control. Now, if you care enough, you can exercise this control personally. You can learn how to program and change the program. You can persuade your cousin who owes you a favor and knows how to program to change it for you. So you don't have to learn how to program personally. You just get someone else to do it. Or you can pay someone to do it. You know, if there were a free program that had a nasty feature and you just wanted that nasty feature removed, it probably wouldn't take a programmer more than a few hours of work. Most Americans, if they really wanted this, could afford to pay someone to do that, just like they can afford to pay a carpenter to do a few hours of work in their house. And certainly any organization or business can afford to do this when it's important. They can afford to, pe to pay people to work much more than a few hours when they need to. And then users can also work together to take advantage of this freedom. Suppose you and a thousand other people want a certain change in a program. Well, if you form an organization and you each put in a hundred dollars, that's a hundred thousand dollars. You can pay a few programmers for a year to work on the changes you want. You can make substantial changes.